Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. The Blade Runner franchise, all the way back to the original novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, has to be one of my favorite sci-fi properties. It's one of the few which, as we talk about the new Alien movie, the new Terminator TV show, has not been burdened by too much content of questionable quality. And perhaps it is that lack of a really fleshed out expanded universe, which I don't actually mean as a negative thing, which has left the franchise with some mysteries. I'd love to know, for example, more about humanity's off-world colonies as alluded to in the original novel, for example. But I think it is this lack of over-explaining which has led to some confusion about even key aspects of the universe, primarily as the topic of today's video, the replicant. Now, this may surprise you, but replicants are not machines. In fact, they don't even have machine parts. I know a lot of people assume that they're quite similar to, for example, the androids from the Alien franchise or, or synths from the Fallout universe which have mechanical components underneath flesh or the Terminator. And to be honest, the original text of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep doesn't help this confusion because, well, it's in the title. They're called androids. In popular parlance, an android is usually understood as like a robot with flesh over it. Still, both the films and the original source material make it clear that replicants are not, in fact, that type of android. Rather, they're essentially genetically engineered humans. In the book, when talking to Rachel, Deckard says, You're not made out of transistorized circuits like a false animal. You're an organic entity. Androids in the novel are essentially fully grown humans who are completely indistinguishable except for what is described as a very painful bone marrow test and the actual difference between replicant or android bone marrow and human bone marrow is unclear I'm guessing it has something to do with the fact that replicant cells don't renew in the same way as human cells do, leading to their shorter lifespan. In the films, they moved away from the term android, instead, as mentioned, going with replicant. I think that was probably to avoid confusion, but because of the lack of real clarity, I think people saw the philosophical discussion of the beings and assumed that they must be mechanical, leading to a lot of the confusion. But it's clear, right from the intro of Blade Runner, the Tyrell Corporation has moved on from advanced robot evolution into the Nexus phase, a being virtually identical to a human. This is sort of hinting at Tyrell having previously been involved with robotics, but now moving on to genetic engineering. Blade Runner 2049 is even more explicit, saying that replicants are bioengineered humans designed by the Tyrell Corporation for off-world use. Funny enough, 2049 is actually much closer to the original Blade Runner in terms of overall plot, especially regarding world building, the state of the earth, off-world colonies, and more, with replicants primarily being essentially a slave race for frontier farmers on new worlds. So how are replicants created? Well, by 2049, it seems like much of the replicant is bioengineered piece by piece instead of being grown in a womb. We know, for example, that they can affect the growing tissue to put markers on it indicating replicant status, usually in form of a serial number. Replicants initially had issues for some reason with cell replacement, leading to vastly shortened lifespans, although this was improved by the Nexus 8 model. Replicants often have what I see as peak or perhaps beyond peak human strength, which I think is a lot of the reason why people think think they're robots, but this isn't because of a robot exoskeleton under the skin. It's due to some sort of hormone or other biological process in the growth stage. Either way, why is this important? Does it matter whether a replicant is a cyborg or an android, a genetically engineered human? Well, I don't know, and that's part of why Blade Runner remains so interesting, these philosophical questions. How different would a brain of circuits of ones and O's be to an organic brain, whether bioengineered or birthed from a woman? I think the revelation for most people that replicants are biological humans, maybe with slight changes just from a different source, does paint their hardships in the Blade Runner franchise as all that more tragic, simply because, for better or for worse, the electronic brain is just one step further away from what we are. 
And given that there is, aside from, again, small differences, no true physical difference between a replicant on a biological level and a human, it throws even more doubt onto the ethics of replicants as a slave class. You know, one of the major shots against replicants, especially in 2049 in the original novel, is that they lack humanity and specifically that they lack empathy. The question of whether this is due to some aspect of their creation or something else, I think, becomes even more interesting when that potential mechanical component is removed. And we get lots of hints at this in the character of Roy Batty and the character of Rachel. It seems pretty clear to me that the assumed default lack of empathy in replicants is not because of some biological flaw in their creation, but because of their circumstances. First of all, most replicants, or at least many, despite their outward appearance, are essentially toddlers. Their body is formed, but having been only alive for several years, their personality is still developing and just they lack the framework to deal with the realities of emotions in real life. We also have to consider for the years a replicant is alive, the older models would have been treated as not just a slave race, but property and subjected to whatever whims of their often colonial overlords, with later replicant models being hunted out of existence. I think the point is that if you put any being in that situation, whether born of a woman or bioengineered, you'll see the exact same response. Really, Blade Runner is all about oppression, about creating an other. And I think that message does become even more interesting when we remove the mechanical aspect like I'm trying to do in this video. When I first watched Blade Runner many years ago, I thought that the replicants failed the Voight Kampf test because of some robotic nature of their eyes or their skin, which just wasn't programmed to properly respond to the questions. The replicants are really no different than ordinary humans, but are subject to essentially a system which has institutionalized their lack of personhood. Returning to the Voight Kampf test, in the original film, it often feels like the androids are being asked more about experiences which they clearly don't have, about what they'd do if their child was caught capturing an animal, or what they'd do if their husband had a nude photo of a girl. These are situations which are clearly outside of their experience, and it's that alongside just their lack of life generally, not some biological flaw which causes the difference in empathetic responses. And we have proof of this in how the Voight Kampf changes depending on the replicant. Rachel has implanted memories and Deckard has a very hard time administering the test. Usually he says it takes 20 to 30 questions to determine whether a replicant is a replicant. For Rachel, it was over 100 and he still wasn't certain. And you know, I was watching this scene on YouTube to refresh myself while recording this video. I kind of do just like to talk rather than script it out. And the description the uploader included, I think, really highlights how the misunderstanding, which I'm discussing, has colored how some people see the film. Dr. Tyrell is experimenting with Rachel to provide her with fake memories so as to be able to better control her. With those memories, Rachel has no idea that she is not human. But what this scene and what the movie is trying to show is that Rachel is human, and the distinction is a false one upheld by the Voight Kampf test. When Rachel has an ordinary human experiences, she begins to react more and more like an ordinary human would, and I think it's obvious that a replicant who lived their entire lives as a human would be indistinguishable on the test from any other human. The use of empathy to sort of create these stratified social classes is actually even more prominent in the book, which features a heavily degraded version of Earth. Humans are actually using the quasi-religion of mercerism and the device known as the empathy box to try to connect with each other and really foster empathetic feelings while still attempting to use empathy in the Voight Kampf test to treat replicants as subhuman. Again, Rachel and further replicants don't come closer to matching humans on the Voight Kampf test because of some technological upgrade in their production. It's simply because they get a better shot. And this is why I also think 2049 is so good. There, we see directly the system used by humanity to maintain these social classes. The baseline test. The baseline test is an explicit acknowledgement of the fact that replicants can develop into ordinary humans without the pressures maintaining the social order. The baseline test measures empathetic and emotional responses, but not for the purpose of determining whether a being is a replicant or an ordinary human, 
but rather to eliminate replicants which forget their place. Though trauma and for K, the belief that he may be human is enough to tear down the final barriers. This is why I think understanding the true nature of replicants is important. Blade Runner is more than just a simple sci-fi story or even a complex sci-fi story, and it's not about whether a machine would be a person. Although it certainly does bring up questions regarding the true nature of consciousness, what Blade Runner is really about is stratified societies, how circumstances and civilization and rules determine how we think about each other, how the system is set up to make some people fail, how the system is set up to create lower classes, how it reinforces itself, not just through the circumstances and how people are born, but the very metrics which keep them in unending cycles. I think it's definitely a message about how social systems exist to dehumanize people to the benefit of the few. But of course, that's just my take on Blade Runner combined with what I think is a very interesting distinction between the true nature of replicants and what many people assume. Just my thoughts though, let me know yours of course down below.